The first order of business for us, because this is a telemetry study, is to put a radio collar on. If we haven't gotten the radio collar on, then we've really done a capture for nothing. In the mid-90s, we collared as many bears as we could find out there, and we did that in an effort to do what's called a density estimate, which is to try to estimate how many bears are in that particular study area. And from that, we could extrapolate to other areas of the park where we know we're gonna find bears. That number comes out to be somewhere between probably 300 and 350, and this is grizzly bears. So 300 to 350 grizzly bears, and it's also north of the Alaska Range. So every part of Denali National Park and Preserve that's north of the Alaska Range, inside our park boundaries, we're figuring at most probably 350 bears. I've been working in Denali National Park since 1989. Um, I actually started as a biological technician in 1991. Over the course of the years, moved from a biologist position I had for a while and then a wildlife biologist is what my position is now. So, better part of 22 years. The bear study started as part of a larger predator-prey study that was started here in the park in 1986. Early in that study, it was determined that there was a fairly large impact on caribou calf predation by grizzly bears. And we went from being an offshoot of that predator-prey study to a real concentrated population ecology study looking at cub productivity and survival. kept that going for just about 20 years. Two years ago we started to transition away from that study to a new study area which is kind of the northeast corner of the park. And the reason that we're doing that is because we're pretty certain that there's a fair amount of movement of bears that spend a good portion of their lives inside the park but they go outside the park boundary onto state lands. The state right now is really working hard on something they call intensive management and a piece of intensive management is predator control. And so in their efforts to help the populations of prey animals, mainly moose and caribou that people are interested in hunting, they're removing predators from some areas. Big difference out here to the north in this new study area is that we're using GPS collars and the idea with those is we get much better information about movements, about where bears are at any particular time. So this is what a dart looks like that we would fire at an animal in order to inject the immobilization drug. And the way this works is there's this needle on a, a threaded cap with the drug in there, this little plunger behind that, in the back of this little plunger in this hole goes a spring-loaded charge and behind that this little tail screws into the end with some yarn sticking out of it so that it flies a little truer out of the end of the gun. On impact with the animal, that little spring-loaded charge that's in the back of the dart explodes and it pushes this little plunger down through the barrel and ejects the drug. And the needle is barbed so that the pressure of the drug coming out of the needle when that, that plunger goes down doesn't push that dart back out of the animal's muscle. Instead, it catches under the skin and stays there so that all of the drug is ejected into the animal. Generally, what happens when we're doing a capture is we have a fixed wing aircraft, usually a super cub that works with us, and they usually spot the animal for us and then once they have an animal located that we want to dart, then they call a helicopter on the radio and we go in and, and do our thing. Once we hit them with a dart, we back off with the helicopter. We usually move away and, and sit someplace and let 
our fixed wing monitor that animal to watch where it's going. If it's getting into a place where we think it might get in trouble if it's headed toward water or if it's headed toward trees or real tall brush where we might have a hard time getting to it or finding it, um, we'll come back in with a helicopter and try to haze it back into an open area where we can keep a close eye on it. The nice thing about the drug that we're using is that it's it's really pretty predictable. Once we get a dart in an animal, the way that it starts to go down is it basically lose control of the muscles in the back part of the body first. So they'll be running along and you know they might stumble a little bit or they might sit down with their butt down on the ground and as it moves forward the front end goes down and the very last thing that that goes down is their head. And once their head is down on the ground and they can't lift their head up, then we know that it's safe to go in and work on them. As soon as they tell us it looks like its head is down, then we go in with the helicopter and we'll usually make a pass over it with the helicopter just to make sure. So as long as when we make that pass, that animal can't lift its head, then we land very close by, we unload a whole ton of gear and set up to do all of the work that we need to do. The first order of business for us, because this is a telemetry study, is to put a radio collar on. If we haven't gotten the radio collar on, then we've really done a capture for nothing. So we get a radio collar on, we take some measurements, we weigh every bear. I have a large, very heavy net. It's a, actually, it's about six feet square. And what we do is roll the bear into that net. We gather up all the corners and we hook them onto a carabiner. And then the other thing that I carry with me on the helicopter is an aluminum tripod that's got 10 foot legs. And so we set the tripod up over the top of the bear. We hook a come along to the tripod. To the come along, we hook that scale to the net and then we crank them up off the ground until they're clear. And we get a weight off of that scale and then we drop them back down and it's as easy as that. We also take a blood sample and a hair sample from every bear that we catch. Just a kind of a general body condition, you know, we get our hands on them and get a feel for whether they're in really great shape or fair shape or really poor shape sometimes. With females that have cubs accompanying her, we usually check the female to see if they've been nursing. We also monitor temperature, heart rate, and um, respirations during the whole time that we have them down. That'll take us, oh, it probably averages about 45 minutes. And once we're finished, we get on out of there and, and leave them there to recover. Purposefully, we leave those animals while they're still immobilized to let them recover from the drug without a lot of activity around them. So it's quiet when they're coming out of the effects of the drug. There's not a you know big loud machine sitting there or a lot of people talking and moving around. They're left there on their own. And then we go back and check on them later in the day to make sure that they're up and about and, and moving around okay. Probably more than anything is being able to tell what way not to go to look for it. The way that I like to describe radio telemetry. Each individual collar has a unique frequency, thereby when we put that collar on an animal, we identify that animal by that individual frequency. We fly out over the study area, we have a receiver that's programmed with all of the potential collars that we could be finding, all the co collars that are deployed out there. Oh. That receiver scans through all of those frequencies. When you get close enough to pick one up on that receiver, you'll hear okay. a beep. The way this works is, whatever direction that animal is, when I point the antenna, the front of the antenna here, in that direction, the signal should come in a lot louder. So what I usually do is just point it in four directions and then I try to narrow it down. I'd say based on the volume of that signal, that bear is off in this direction somewhere. Basically everything is in that package, the battery, uh, crystal, and when we have these built, this belting material that forms the collar is quite a bit longer than what you see here and we have lots of these holes punched in it so that we've got a lot of latitude for being able to size them because bears are 
so different size-wise, especially between adult males and females. These colors that I'm putting out here to the north in this new study, we program those so that they're getting locations every five hours because we want three seasons worth of data so that the GPS part of the collar shuts down while they're in hibernation. And generally every year, all of the bears are pretty much tucked into dens to stay for the winter by October 31st. And they start up again April 1st. What we have on these bears that we're putting collars on out to the north, this new st study that we're transitioning into, is something that's sort of middle of the road. Those collars have a VHF signal so we can radio track on them with a plane. They also have the GPS technology, but it's not real-time technology. They store that location information in the collar, and we don't get that information until we retrieve the collar. So we get the collar back and we download it and then we have all the location information. We do have two collars that we got back both because bears were able to get them off. That collar gets the GPS coordinates, the latitude longitude from the satellite at some interval that we determine ahead of time. And for those collars right now, it's, I think it's every five hours. The big drawback there is that we don't get the data for three years. So we really aren't going to be able to have much to say about those animals until we retrieve all those collars. Mm -hmm.